the stone cold slumber of a thousand years comes to an end October 24th. Gargoyles, series premiere today. And now by Franco-American SpaghettiOs. Gargoyles tattoos now on specially marked labels. Of SpaghettiOs. Ah. Hey guys, I was just ruminating over these comic books here. This comic, number one, came out when the final episode of season one was released. And so that there was a nice treat between seasons and we get this incredible Joe Mad cover. I, I think, I consider it iconic. Um, it's embossed with a cardstock cover. I, I really like it. Um, you can see that Goliath has arm hair. That was part of his early design. It, he also at that time like had a, a pendant and arm braces, but I guess Joe only liked the arm hair. I like how long their nails are. Those were uh, whittled out of the designs for the show to make it easier to animate, but they did have claws. Look at Broadway. The comic is written, the first few are written by Martin Pasco, who um, is not very good, but the drawings are by Amanda Connor and they are what you look at these for. Also, I want to point out the, the colors by Greg White. They are very unique and cool, like the night skies are like shades of purple and pink and blue and when like blue and the greens are are brought in they look so good and there are like exclamations of red like that look at that that's really good but starting from the beginning like this is a tour de force of comic art this is i dare say downright sugoi Lisa has um, an inner monologue. She's writing in like a diary. That's like a security risk. She's writing down like for real all her like secrets. Those are uh, easily compromised. But um, you may not be able to guess it, but Demona is in this suit. I don't recall she ever having like one of these big suits in the show. That was um, Xanatos and his robot clan. But she's in on the action. She's helping Xanatos kidnap unwitting victims to do experiment tests on. That's Demona's face. You could tell. Um, there are some really cute panels. But this is written by Martin Pasco, So you get like really out of character. Like I've never watched the show before. Dialogue like... I thought that was merely your manner of subconsciously asking me to look after you. Yeah, Goliath would say that. He also like says backwash in one of these issues, and uh, no, Goliath would not say the word backwash. Also, um, I said the coloring was really good. The only part that is not is with like um, Elisa is half African, half Native American, and she definitely does not look it at all. That's not a good job. Also, um, Matt Bluestone is here, and he's like blonde. Let's find a good picture of him. Look at all these ads. There's like ads every few pages. There's a, a blonde Matt. He's a redhead, actually. That, that kind of thing happens a lot. Um... One of the least accurate characters is Xanatos. He's always, like, a grimacing rat bastard. He has, like, none of his charisma. He's always scowling his face off, raising his blood pressure. It, he's really unenjoyable, and it just, like... Did Martin Pasco, like, watch the show? Um... Like, I love, I love Amanda's art, but maybe you could give him, like, some smirks. There's all kinds of cool stuff to see, though. Like, um, there are, there are pieces in here that are, like, properly gothic. 
and cool. I love this in the clock tower bit. Oh, um... Hudson doesn't have his scar. That's missing. Lex has his own Lex program, it looks like. Or he was looking at Xanatos Enterprises logo or whatever. But it looks like it says Lex. Does he have like an Ed from Cowboy Bebop like hacking program? The, this, these colors are insane. I love the, the... The color palette is so good. And, and that... The action in the paneling is getting, like, really crazy and cool. Look at this. This one's really good. He's, like, legitimately surprised it's Demona. Like, really? Um, fold for the gold. All the deep perspective architecture and stuff is really cool. I, I like this shot. I mean, what shots don't I like, but I like this one in particular. Like, I feel the environment. He's not going to get a lot of uh, flight capability in there. In fact, he does kind of swoop down and land. That's what he's doing. The action does not cease. Come on. <laughs> so many ads. These old comics. Ooh, we get a full spread here. The highlights on Goliath. The coloring in this is spectacular. This comic looks so good. I highly recommend these, just don't read them. Let's move on to number two. This is a cool cover too. The boys descending upon me. I like the use of spatter for the stars and in the wings. Uh, this issue is um, very bad to read. Brooklyn may be the, the worst character in this comic series. He's just absolutely the worst. So um, Lex got the bright idea to use this tracker he found and test it out. And um, they're making him fly around doing nothing instead of doing something, and Brooklyn's angry about that because he wants to go, like, to the club. But they're too busy testing out the tracker when they could just, you know, do that while going to the club, but they end up at the club. Oh, yeah. Lex uses cardinal directions, but, like, Brooklyn doesn't know what those are. You Like, you'd think, like... Uh, a, medi a medieval person would uh, know those. I guess he doesn't. Also, this this dialogue here, I'm not that thrilled about having you for a brother. I know I don't want you for a keeper. And Broadway's like, you gotta fucking chill. This breaks my heart every time I read it. It's like the worst thing I've ever read. He's just so happy about the tracking bracelets, and these weren't brought into the story so they could be compromised in any way. It makes total sense. Um, apparently it took them a long time to get the trackers to work. I don't know why. Inside the clock tower stuff is always cool to look at in this. I like the old TV, look at that. Also, these, um, to look like it's on TV, I think the color plates are, like, purposely shifted to give a little bit of a look there. <laughs> a little bit of a look. That's the description I'm going for. Oh, you could buy the movie. Just out on video, a great new movie with the hottest heroes ever. Let's go! Gargoyles, the movie. Who are you? Humans call me Gargoyles, the movie. 
oh, here's the club they wanted to go to. But, like, shit's going down. There's a reference to cocaine in this Disney Marvel comic. But they're like, oh, I'm not selling cocaine. I'm selling guns. But they still referenced it. Like, um... This, this comic is kind of skeevy. Like, bad vibes. Broadway, um, possibly tampering with evidence, extracted the bullet from the wall. But he does give it to Elisa, which helps her out, so I guess that's fine. But, uh, th this, this woman is kidnapped. Um... The only thing I ain't got is the wings. Oh, he got the wings all right. Right in the face. Ha. Huh. Thanks, Martin. This is an odd picture here. Oh, they, they, like, um, Manda, like, draws them with, like, these, like, rat textured tails. I haven't seen anything like that in any other of the Gargoyles comics. This is interesting color, the, the pink and the, the blue. That's really cool. Oh, yeah! That weird picture I was talking about, um... Brooks says, cool pose, Broadway. You're gonna give a pigeon a heart attack. This is right after witnessing a man be shot and a girl kidnapped. And, like, he's, like, making these mean-spirited jabs. Real bad vibes. This is cruel. Oh, here's Matt. You wouldn't be able to tell because he doesn't look right, but that's him. This is after the- this- this was made after the first season, by the way. Also, um... I think- I think it was in the first issue where they mentioned that it- it took place after... the, um, episode 11? Yeah, it takes place after... 11, long way till morning, so like, yes, this absolutely does fit into canon. It, yes. Yes. Apparently they've seen this show. Apparently. Oh, I like this idea about, um, them being in stone sleep and they're just moved around. They don't know where they're gonna wake up. That wasn't done very much. Maybe a few times. Oh, here's an, an Elisa assault at the, uh, at the pool table. I mean, he's a dangerous villain, and it's okay, and she's a cop, so. Oh, um, Elisa's desk has some weird things, like this frog. She is a... Like a candy necklace? A whoopee cushion? A Godzilla? That? Um... I like the clock tower stuff, it's so cool. Uh oh. Oh yeah, this is like Tony Dracon, and he's like real evil in this. Like he's just gonna murder Lex. Another cool cover. Most of them are pretty cool when Amanda's doing it. Uh oh. Also, if you noticed, um, 
His tracker band is gone. It was stolen. Oh, oh no. Oh no, now they're gonna be able to track the other gargoyles. Oh, here's one of my favorite pages. This one's really great. The atmosphere and the lighting. Incredible. Cool panel. The moon's always huge. Oh, Broadway reveals himself to this couple here, and they literally just, um, feed him dinner. Oh, they gave, uh, Bronx bubblegum. I don't think that's good for him. No, that's bad. What, you don't want, like, dogs swallowing bubblegum, do you? Oh, here's some more of this. Epic. Look it. Look it. Ooh hoo hoo hoo! Ooh hoo! Look at it. He's so fucking huge. Ooh, there's some detailed coloring going on here. There's this light coming from up here that's bluish. Look at that. That's really good. Oh no. They bought more of those trackers and set them to the same frequency the boys are using. Oh no. Oh no. Who could have seen this coming? Oh, I love this. Oh yeah, so the, uh, the family just feeds Broadway. And they're just fine with him. Look at this. Spinning a gun around. Be careful with that. You don't know who you could accidentally shoot with that. They keep feeding him. Um, and then the, the rest of the gang just show up and reveal themselves. And, but it's too much and she faints. This is so weird. They're like, <laughs> they, they try and stay in shadow, but they're like, here we are. Epic. Look at this. These faces are really cute. Now we get, um, the escaped experiment of that kidnapped woman, created by the evil Dr. Phobos, not Anton Savarius, but Phobos, you need a, another mad scientist. So we get Dr. Phobos and his Medusa project that is totally in the show that really matters. Anyway, oh, I, in the in the final issue, they do in the letters talk about working with producer Greg Wiseman to assure that this comic ties in with the animated series. So, um, yeah, this is canon. This actually happened. Anyway, I, I've only covered three because that's all I could stand to read. Um, trying to read through all of them made me genuinely unhappy. But you check these out and you look at them. Don't read them and have a great time because I have a great time using my eyeballs and not reading it. These are little treasures I have, and I look at them all the time. They're inspiring. 
May as well show uh, this cover. I'll show you all of them as a matter of um, I have them still in their bags. I was not expecting to do this, but like this, I, this might be my favorite cover. This one's really good. The color, the highlights on Bronx is really good. The anatomy, um, I just really like it. Four, five, six. You may notice that um, some of these have, are like this. I, I don't like taping the bags and they like flip up so I put them down like this but they kind of get crunched up so I'm gonna stop doing that but just just saying that's why that's like that seven oh, this is she's fucking awful the, these guest artist covers um aren't as strong as Amanda's Nine. Ten. That was supposed to be blood, but it's it's water. He's just a very wet criminal. And then, uh... This is the last one. Eleven? Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll talk about these in the future, but not now. I enjoy... Joy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.